Hello and welcome to another video in the lecture series entitled Advanced Biomaterials. So in the previous video we had discussed about UV visible spectroscopy and its significance and also what is spectroscopy in general. So today's video we will be discussing about what is a UV visible spectroscope and how it actually works to determine the concentration of an analyte. So on a brief recap what is spectroscopy? So, we had discussed that spectroscopy is a technique which investigates the interaction of matter with electromagnetic radiation and UV visible spectroscopy is therefore a technique which determines the interaction of matter with wavelength with, uh, uh, with the wavelength or with energy in the UV visible region. Right? So, if we discuss the UV visible region, it is it ranges from 200 to 800 nanometers. So 200 to 400 nanometers is the UV region and 400 to 800 nanometers is the visible region. So 400 nanometers correspond to the blue or the violet end of the visible spectrum which is characterized by a uh, lower wavelength and higher frequency therefore higher energy and the 800 nanometer corresponds to the red region of the spectrum which is characterized by a longer wavelength and a, and a lower frequency or energy. So frequency is actually uh, inversely proportional to the wavelength. So when we say that an electromagnetic radiation has longer wavelength, we imply that it has a longer wavelength and a lo uh, therefore a lesser frequency and a lesser energy. So if an electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation has a lesser wavelength, therefore it has more energy and more frequency associated with it. So in this diagram, we have presented a very uh, brief overview of a UV visible spectroscope. So it essentially has a light source and a filament. So this light source generates a beam of light which passes through a chamber known as the monochromator. So the monochromator holds a prism which separates or the separates the light into individual components. So this prism will separate this light into different individual components and it will have a slit or an aperture through which only a particular wavelength of light will be allowed to pass through. So once this this particular beam of light passes through, it goes and hits a sample holder. So this sample holder is essentially a cuvette. This cuvette is holds the sample and the, the intensity of the incident beam is represented as I0. So the beam which passes through the from the monochromator to the sample holder has an intensity which is represented as I0 and in the sample holder we will have the sample which will contain the absorbing species or the absorbing entities. These absorbing entities will absorb a part of the incident radiation or the incident beam of light, energy from the incident beam of light and it will transmit the rest of it. So the beam which is transmitted or which passes through this sample has an intensity represented as I and it is detected by the detector. So when a, when a beam of light at a particular wavelength passes through a sample which has absorbing entities in it, the absorbing entities will absorb some part of the, of the light energy and it will emit the rest and it will actually uh, pass the rest with intensity I. So, in a situation where the sample will have a, some amount of entities or some components which will absorb a particular uh, wavelength of light, so the incident intensity I0 will be greater than the emergent intensity I. So this is the rationale behind the UV visible spectroscopy. So what happens is that when light energy in the UV visible region hits a particular sample, which 
contains analytes having absorbing species so the compounds will absorb that part of energy and the electrons will absorb that energy and it will go from a lower energy level to a higher energy level so the electronic transition will take place from a lower energy level to a higher energy level so if we remember the energy level diagram so n is the non bonding we have sigma we have pi pi star and sigma star so transition can happen from sigma to sigma star or pi to pi star or n to pi star anything based on now this transitions will take place from lower energy to higher energy and this will be characteristic for a particular compound and for a particular wavelength of light hitting so in the sample holder there will be this uh, absorbing species which will uh, which will absorb this light and then electrons will undergo this transition now uh, this sample holder in the uv visible uh, uh, instrument is a cuvet so we use a glass cuvet if we are trying to find the absorbance in the visible region but if you are trying to uh, find out the absorbance in the uv uv region we use a quartz cuvet so this quartz actually allows for for the uh, absorbing in the uv uh, region of the spectrum so once these electrons are in the excited state they will absorb a part of the incident energy and they will transmit or emit the rest or it will actually uh, allow the path, uh, the rest of the energy to pass through it so that will be the i not and i so once it absorbs that energy it will emit or it will allow the passing of the or it will pass the rest of it so this sorry so this will be i and this will be detected by the detector so now uh, this transmitted uh, radiation uh, which is represented by transmittance which is i by i not so absorbance is inversely proportional to the transmittance value which is log i by i not so there is this concept called lambda max which is the wavelength at which maximum absorbance takes place at a given for a given molecule so at a particular wavelength as we have discussed uh, a a particular analyte having a particular compound will absorb maximum at that particular wavelength so according to a very important law in uv visible spectroscopy which is the beer lambert's law which states that absorbance is proportional to the concentration of the absorbing species and the length which is actually the path length now what is a path length it is actually the distance the light traverses inside the sample holder which holds the sample so if this is the cuvet and this is the path of is this is the path through which the light traverses so this is the path length which is represented as l so absorbance is proportional to the concentration of the absorbing species in our solution and the length is actually the path length so in order to remove this proportionality constant we introduce epsilon epsilon is the absorptivity or the molar absorbance or the uh, molar Uh, extension coefficient molar absorption absorption coefficient or the molar extension coefficient so based on this absorbance is proportional to the concentration of the absorbing species from the beer lambert's law we can get an idea about the concentration of our analyte in our uh, sample based on the absorbance value so more the concentration more is the absorbance or if we are trying to measure absorbance more is the value of absorbance so we can say that more is the concentration of our absorbing species so therefore we can uh, determine that uh, this uv visible spectroscopy is a simple yet a very powerful uh, analytical tool in different which is used in different experiments 
for finding out the concentration and also we can use it for determining or characterizing our a synthesized biomaterial for using in different for fabricating it in different composites or in different applications so uh, we can also use this principle to determine the concentration of an unknown and an unknown species so what we do is we prepare a standard curve containing uh, known concentrations and by plotting absorbance in arbitrary units we can determine by extrapolation into the uh, the x axis we can find out the concentration of the unknown species so with this we summarize the uv visible spectroscope as a powerful tool in the characterization of a given biomaterial and also it can provide us some information about the chemistry of the uh, the analyte or the compound in the as well through these different spectral characteristics by scanning the sample from maybe in the uv visible region from 200 to 800 nanometers and identifying the spectral characteristics we can determine or we can have some information or some insight into the specific chemistry of a molecule in our in our reaction mixture or in our and in our sample so with this we conclude today's lecture hope you enjoyed it see you in the next video thank you